As you heard, uh, we played again for you at the beginning of uh, the program here. The president said millions of hardworking undocumented immigrants living in the states who have no criminal backgrounds and meet the other criteria will be able to live in the states without fear or threat of deportation. Well, today I spoke uh, with a person who will be impacted by what the president said last night, Esther Sanchez. She's lived in the U.S. illegally for 14 years. She has three children who are all U.S. citizens. And with the help of a translator, she spoke with me about what the address last night and the action of the president means to both her and her family. For a lot of us, when we watched the president last night, we saw the reaction from folks in Washington. I, we talk about numbers and we talk about policy, but we don't talk about people. How much did last night's speech by the president and his promised executive action, how much will that change your life? Bueno, es un cambio bien, demasiado grande. I think that it's a, it's a huge impact for us and our family. I think more than anything, it's the opportunity to live without fear and the chance to come out of the shadows for, for my family. How much fear has there been that you, your husband, could be deported at any time? Bueno, este, no, so, uh, the, it's a huge fear. Um, for me, uh, I think of uh, a few years back, my husband was on his way home from work and he had an altercation in the street with, with, with some people that wanted to assault him. And what ended up happening is the police showed up at the end of this and they grabbed my husband instead of the people that were attacking him. And thank God, nothing happened to him that night, but that could happen any day. And, and, and you never know whether, whether he was going to come home. How about your children? Um, they're all American citizens, 13, 10, and 6, as I understand. So How much did last night change uh, for them in terms of knowing that their parents will be here as long as you continue to stay out of trouble and continue to move towards being a full American citizen? Bueno, anoche, cuando escucharon el, la noticia, este, el niño mayor... They were so excited last night. We, when we were watching the news together, they, as soon as they heard it, they came up to me. My, my six-year-old, she, she, she doesn't really know what's going on, but the two oldest kids, um, they came up to me and they gave me this, this huge hug and they said, hey, now we're going to get to go see our grandfather for the first time, you know, and they, they haven't gotten to, to see him. And they gave me a hug and said, yeah, this means dad's going to be able to get a better job. And, uh, you know, they were just so excited, and, and us too, as well. We were all excited. And I think they also shared that they're not going to have the same fear of the, of the police. Uh, you know, before there was always this sense that, you know, if the, we interacted with the police at any moment, who knew what was going to happen? And it felt like they, they, they didn't have, they could lose that fear in some ways. You know, there's some people watching tonight, I'm sure, that'll say, um, well, we sympathize with Esther and her family situation, but... They broke the law coming here. Why should we create exemptions for them? Um, why should people who are playing by the rules, um, you know, not be rewarded while Esther and her family is? How, how would she respond to that? Bueno, nosotros, nosotros hemos llegado a este país. So I think that this is a country we've came to and we've contributed to this, this country, you know, especially our kids who are born here, who are American citizens. And I really feel that they, they, they have the right to, to not have a broken family. And, and that's, that's really part of, of, of what I think is so important about this. I can imagine what your children consider themselves. They consider themselves Americans. They've been here their whole life. Do you consider yourself Mexican or do you consider yourself American? Realmente me considero lo que ellos quieren que yo me I think that um, I would consider myself as my kids consider themselves, right? Uh, I live for my children and, and even as they've been here and as, as I've been here for almost 15 years, we adapt and, and grow and, uh, and I'm adapting to the customs that they're growing. They're, they're, they're growing up in this country with American customs and habits and so I would consider myself as, as, as my kids consider themselves. And uh, certainly after having been here for 15 years, I think we are, we are part of this, this city and, and this country. What's your American dream? Wow. Es tener una mejor vida, una oportunidad. I would say uh, it's a great question. Um, but I, I have many uh, American dreams, but I think one you know, I, I'm, I'm getting a little older now, but um, I would say that one of my dreams is certainly uh, to, to be able to study, to go back to school, 
and to be able to really study to, to help my kids out because of the diagnosis that they have. The diagnosis, they, they've been diagnosed on the autism spectrum, all, all three of my kids. And uh, I really want to be able to fight for them and fight for their, the quality of their education and special education, and not just my own children, but I also want to work with other parents who might not have the trainings or the skills or knowledge of how to fight for their kids that are in special ed. Um, to make sure that they have the, the type of quality of education they need. So I think that's one thing mm -hmm. that's a big part of my American dream. A Andrew, this question for you. Yes. When you hear that families like hers and others, they're just looking for a free ride, what would you say? When I hear that, I, I think I would say um, Esther and, and, and her husband are, are great examples of somebody that's not here on a free ride. They're, they're paying payroll taxes, they're paying income taxes, voluntarily filing income taxes, they're paying their sales tax, they're contributing to this country, they're growing our economy. And when many of our families are, uh, have uh, families like Asteris that are um, cleaning our houses, taking care of our children, uh, there's just an incredible contradiction there where we welcome them in uh, only in certain aspects and not in others. So I think I would say uh, it's not a free ride, uh, it, it is uh, families that are contributing to our country and that have the same American dream that my ancestors have when they came to this country. Uh, so I think that's, that's mm. how I'd answer is, is it's just a continuation of the American dream that brought my grandparents here to Poughkeepsie from, from Switzerland, uh, just a slightly different face and time. Mm. I say, um, Andrew, thank you both very much. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, I think your conversation's not as, uh, hasn't been as big a part of the dialogue as I think uh, it maybe needs to be, um, putting a face um, when we talk about these numbers, et cetera. But thank you both very much. Now, when we come back, we will head closer to home. In fact, to New York, where Mayor de Blasio once again coming to his wife's defense after a new poll shows most New Yorkers want her butt out of politics. We'll talk about that more after this.